Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth module of the course. In all the previous lectures, we try to understand the human being and existence. And through our exploration, we saw that human being is coexistence of self and body and self is central to human existence. In module four, we try to understand the existence and we saw that the whole existence is there as coexistence and coexistence is central to existence and coexistence expresses itself as the four orders in the nature with their submergence, innateness, natural characteristics, activities and inheritance. Now with all this clarity, we'll go to understand the role of human being in the entire existence as we started discussing in lecture 20, we'll continue with that. And with this, we'll get the clarity of human conduct. We'll also discuss the other components of all encompassing resolution. And then we'll sum up the whole course in this module. So the title of this module is Understanding Human Conduct, All Encompassing Resolution and Holistic Way of Living. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about human conduct. Now there can be two models of human conduct that we'll discuss. And in this lecture, we'll talk about model one. In the following lecture, we'll talk about model two. So recapitulating what we had started discussing with. So the human desire is continuous happiness, which is the need of the self. And it is equated to right understanding, right feeling and right thought. This right understanding is something that we uh, discussed and Right feeling and right thought based on right understanding is something that is called as resolution. And when we look at the resolution, there are nine components of it and we have been discussing right understanding. So, so far we talked about the right understanding of human being, then we discussed the right understanding of existence. And now we are going to talk about right understanding of role of human being in this existence. We started discussing this in the previous lecture and now we are going to continue with that. So we'll talk about knowledge of the human conduct. So to be known is the existence. And when we go to explore what is to be known, there are three things to be known, human being, existence, and the role of human being in this existence, which is termed as human conduct. And the process remains the same. The process is awakening to the activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. The content of contemplation is natural characteristic. The content of understanding is harmony, that is innateness. And the content of realization is coexistence, that is submergence. Natural characteristic is also called as relationship. So this is something that we have been doing. And if you look at this complete course, we are intending to awaken the higher activities of the self so that the lower activities of the self get guided, get self-organized. So in the process of knowing, that is understanding, we have to investigate into knowledge of human being and knowledge of existence, something that we have been doing. And on this basis, we want to investigate into knowledge of human conduct. So we look at human conduct from two different angles. We look into two formulations. One is model one and the other is model two. So we'll try to see the difference in the two models also. And this model one is based on the clarity that we had while discussing uh, the content in module three and module four. In model one, based on the discussion that we had so far regarding knowledge of human being and knowledge of existence, we'll try to understand the human conduct. And here again, there could be two possibilities. One possibility is when we are moving from block V2 to block V1, that is we are moving from the lower activity to the higher activities. And the other possibility is that the, <clears throat> that the realization is there. And with that, now we are moving to the lower activities. That is the lower activities are guided by the higher activities. So we'll start by discussing the, the second part of the model one, when the higher activities are guided. And toward the end of the lecture, we also discuss the possibility when we are moving from lower activities to the higher activities. So we'll discuss these two. So the same thing is mentioned here. So conduct when we are moving towards higher activity of the self and the conduct when we are moving downwards from the higher activity of the self, this represents the complete human conduct. So here we are starting with the second possibility of model one. And at the end of the session, we'll also mention briefly about the 
first possibility of model one. So let us look into the second possibility. So I hope you are able to see uh, what human conduct means. So we discussed about the role of human being in the entire existence in previous lecture, and that is basically the human conduct. Now, when my activities are activated completely, when block B1 and B2 are fully activated, then what is going to be my role with the human being, with the rest of nature, in the larger orders? This is what we are going to explore. So this is model one. Now here the higher level activities are more. <clears throat> now here the higher level activities are activated. The awakening has taken place. So the self is able to see itself realized. So the self is able to see itself submerged in space and it is also able to see the whole, whole nature submerged in space. So there is clarity of coexistence, existence and submergence. Now with this, the authentication is taking place. <clears throat> so this is the way it will look like. So I'm able to see myself submerged in space. Okay, so the space is there everywhere and I want to see myself submerged in space. Now with that, the dynamic activity is the authentication. So the lower level activities get guided by this realization and then the understanding becomes complete. So you can see the, how the arrow is moving. So the realization has taken place. Now with that, the authentication is complete. The authentication is complete. Now with that, the understanding is complete. With this, the real, <clears throat> with this, the determination gets complete. With this, the contemplation gets complete. So we have complete clarity of harmony in the nature. That is self-organization, innateness. With this, we have the clarity of relationship, natural characteristic and participation in the larger order. Now with this kind of awakening and the way you can see the activities are bit getting guided, the imaging is now free of all preconditionings. Okay. And the desires get definite. With that, the comparing is now completely guided by coexistence, harmony and relationship and the, the senses, health and profit are guided. With this only we analyze a happy life and try to live accordingly. Thus, the testing in the self is guided by coexistence, harmony and relationship. And the selection that is taking place in the self is always in terms of mutually fulfilling behavior, mutually fulfilling interaction with the rest of nature and mutually fulfilling participation in the larger order. So you can see the way the arrows are moving. Okay, when the realization has taken place, so it is moving like this. Now this is the state when it is fully guided, isn't it? So we start by moving from block B2 to block B1 and we come to a stage when the complete understanding is ensured. And with this, the activities are guided like this. The activities are self-organized like this. So you can try to relate this with yourself. Okay, would you like the activities to get organized like this or you have some other imagination about this isn't it are you able to relate this particular development this particular process of awakening of the self to yourself or not try to relate it to yourself try to explore it for yourself now when this takes place then we are having the realization within and then the expression outside is in terms of undivided society universal human order going up to human tradition and as we discussed earlier, we are able to see the state of bliss, satisfaction, peace, happiness in the self. So let me briefly mention that bliss is the state when the understanding is complete based on realization of coexistence. Satisfaction is the state when all my feelings, which I'm able to contemplate, get ensured in me. And with that, my desires get definite. My imaging gets definite. Peace is the state when the thoughts get definite with the completeness of activity of desire with the contemplation getting complete. And then the persistence, harmony and justice guide my comparing based on senses, health and profit. So there is no more contradiction in the self. There is no more conflict in the self, in the thoughts. And then this ensures happiness. So we are always able to test happiness because there is no more contradiction, conflict, enslavement in the self. And this is all that we are working for. 
and if you put this all together then this is what is called as continuous happiness so to have the continuity of happiness we need to ensure the state of development of the self so that there is bliss in the self in continuity now when this happens naturally your participation every time is in terms of mutual happiness mutual prosperity and fulfillment of the human goal so your competence to behave with mutual happiness leads to undivided human society the competence to ensure fulfillment of the rest of nature leads to uh, your participation in the larger order and then you are able to fulfill the human goal and then you are able to participate in the universal human order so this is model 1 so this is something that is going to naturally follow with your right understanding we talked about block b1 and b2 so far now block b3 is my conduct with the human being block b4 is my participation with the rest of nature and my participation in the larger order so this b3 and b4 get definite with the activation of b1 so we can put our conduct in these two parts when we are interacting with the human being we are able to ensure mutual happiness which leads to undivided society that is our participation our role our conduct is always in terms of ensuring undividedness in the society so that we have a human society similarly whenever we interact with the nature our participation is such that we are able to preserve the nature we are able to enrich the nature we are able to protect the nature gratitude like the nature and when it comes to fulfilling the human goal we are able to fulfill the human goal right there are four human goals that we have discussed earlier also right understanding and right feeling in every human being prosperity in every family carelessness that is trust in the society and coexistence with nature so we are able to fulfill the human goal and that leads to universal human order so in addition to block b1 and b2 now we can talk about block b3 and b4 and the conduct is here in block b3 and b4 in b2 also we can locate the conduct because the thought part is there the imagination part is there but when it comes to living in our expression this is what we have to study b3 and b4 so again you can verify this for yourself that with this right understanding and showed in you are you able to see this possibility in you in your behavior it is going to be mutually fulfilling like this or not isn't it and you would like to be like this because we are talking about you we are talking about the self and the development has to take place in the self and when the development takes place in the self it naturally gets expressed in our behavior work and participation and we naturally are able to participate to ensure an undivided human society and universal human order so this is a natural outcome so the more we are able to work for realization within the expression outside is of course naturally there so the same thing is stated here so this is the expression outside so this is the expression outside so on one end we are able to ensure realization within and on the second end and on the other end we are able to express outside in terms of universal human order and human tradition and as we said earlier that the more you start working for activating realization the more you are able to participate in a fulfilling manner with every entity of nature be it human being or animals or birds or trees or plants or soil or water you are able to uh, fulfill all these units through your conduct now if you remember all the components of realization so there were nine components and we had related in this manner earlier also and this is something to recapitulate the same so 3.1 that is right understanding is here so the realization of coexistence and its expression going to the universal human order can be seen like this we had discussed all the components of resolution and we saw that so 3.1 that is right understanding is here when we are able to see the whole existence as coexistence and with this the right understanding gets complete it is followed by wisdom 3.2 and when we have this clarity of relationship that is natural characteristic that is participation in the larger order then we are able to image how to live how to fulfill what we really want to be and with that we are able to ensure the signs of living the signs of participation in the larger order and it is here 
at the level of imagination. And then this is followed by our behavior, work, and participation in the larger order, leading to undivided human society and universal human order and going up to human tradition. So this is the way we had related all the components of resolution to the self. And in a single look, we can be able to see what resolution means essentially. And the basic aspiration that is continuity of happiness is here, which can relate, which is there for me as well as the other. So to be able to see model one of human conduct, essentially this is something to be understood that with the development of the self, we are able to participate in this particular manner, which is always fulfilling. Now the same thing can be expressed in this manner. So we have this understanding of the entire existence and here is the self and the self, which is in the process of development is able to have the right conduct with this development, with this development accomplished in the self. So while discussing human conduct, we mentioned that there are two possibilities conduct when we are moving towards higher activities of the self. And the second possibility is when we are moving downwards from the higher activity of the self. And this represents the complete human conduct. And we have talked about the second possibility, isn't it? With the realization, understanding, and contemplation being awakened, we talked about the second possibility. And now we'll briefly try to understand what model one is with the first possibility. So this first possibility means conduct when we are ascending from lower to the higher activities of the self. So you can see how the arrows are reversed now, isn't it? So we might be operating presently at the level of expectation, right? So we are making some selection and that is pushing towards some taste. And then this is driving towards analyzing. And with that, the comparing is taking place, which is unguided because the understanding has not taken place. And with this comparing, we are trying to image a happy life. And this remains unexplored for the moment. Okay. Now we are trying to move from here to here now. So what happens in the process when we are moving from the lower activity to the higher activity of the self? the contemplation starts getting activated and with that contemplation, the understanding also starts getting developed. And this keeps on going in the self and gradually we are able to come to a stage when the realization takes place. So here you can see how we are moving from bottom to top. Okay. So this is the first possibility. And we are able to come to a stage when we are able to realize the whole existence as coexistence. So if you look at the process of development of the self, it is like this. So we might be operating here at the level of expectation. From there, we are able to move to the level of thought. And then we are able to move to the level of desire. And then we are able to contemplate on the right feelings. And from here, we are able to go to even higher activities. And there comes a stage when we are able to realize the whole existence as coexistence. And then once this is accomplished, so the second possibility gets open and then with this, and then with this realization, we are able to guide the lower activity of the self. And this is the way the self gets self-organized. So this is the first possibility. So we are all in this process only. We are moving from lower activities to the higher activities. Once the higher activities get activated, get awakened, then the lower activities will get self-organized. Isn't it? So with this whole discussion, now we have some homework for you. So observe your current conduct and investigate whether it is aligned to human conduct or not. So how much of your conduct is guided by the feeling of relationship, by the understanding of harmony in the nature, by the realization of coexistence in this existence. Okay. So you have to see how much your conduct is self-organized and how much it is unorganized. Then identify the areas where your conduct is not definitely. Then identify the areas where your conduct is not completely human and detail out what you are thinking to do about it. If you feel that you get irritated, you get angry, you carry a feeling of revenge for the other, you may carry some ill will for the other. Now, if that is the case and you are behaving or expressing these feelings to be outside, then you need to work out how you can transform from this state how you can transform from this state. 
Now, thirdly, uh, at present, what do you think of the scope of your participation or conduct? That is till which level of. Now, the third question is at present, what do you think of the scope of your participation or conduct? That is till which level of your living? Be it family, society, nature, country, nature, or entire existence, you are able to participate harmoniously. You are able to participate on the basis of awakening of the higher activities of the self. And the fourth question is, with how many people are you able to see and accept your relationship unconditionally and continuously? That is, you have the natural feeling for them, like trust, respect, and continuity, and you are able to respond and not react in all conditions. Now, this is something to observe about your conduct, about your behavior, and these things do count a lot. Okay, if you look at your living in the family, many times these kinds of situation may emerge and you feel unhappy about it and you have to pick out the solution for that. But now you are able to see that even to relate in the family rightly, okay, to be having a behavior which is mutually fulfilling all the time, you need to work for all this, right understanding of the human being, right understanding the existence. And you'll see that the more we are competent to participate in our family, we also become competent to participate in the world family for an undivided society and universal human order. So this is the assignment for you today. So in today's lecture, we talked about human conduct and we talked about one model of the human conduct. And that is when, when the higher level activities of the self are awakened, then what would be the impact of this on the imagination and in terms of your behavior, work and participation, how it will be there. And there also we talked about two possibilities. One, when we are moving from lower activities to the higher activities. And the second one is when we are moving from the higher activities to the lower activities. So this is all that we discussed. Now in the next lecture, we'll talk about model two. So thank you all.